Hi everybody, I am so excited today to be doing this video with Amelia. This is a video of names from women in the Bible, and what we're doing is we're contrasting the admirable names versus the unusable names. There have been a lot of questions about this lately, so we just wanted to put a video together talking about this. These women were real. The Jews were excellent scribes, and even historians look at the Bible. So these women were real, and we're so excited to talk about them today. Hi guys! So I was super excited when Alexia reached out to me and asked if I wanted to do a collaboration video with her because I really, really like her videos. Um, I love all the information she gives about biblical baby names and she does so much research and puts so much effort into each video and she definitely put a lot of effort and research into this one as well. Um, and I loved the idea she had for a collaboration video. Um, so what we're doing is we're talking about some of the women in the Bible. And a lot of the time when people are talking about the Bible, the focus is more on the men. Just because in biblical times, the men were sort of the ones running the show. But there are so many uh, powerful and interesting female characters in the Bible as well. And even if you don't like believe in um, what the Bible says, or you don't believe that the Bible is the Word of God, you can still look at it as a collection of stories and in every story there are good guys and there are bad guys and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about some bad women from the Bible or some uh, unadmirable women from the Bible and we're going to be talking about some really really great um, female characters from the Bible. The first unusable name I want to use is Jezebel. Jezebel was the wife of a king in Israel, and she killed so many prophets that one of the king's own servants actually hid a hundred prophets in caves and brought them food and water. Um, according to Webster's Dictionary, calling someone a Jezebel is calling her a scheming and shamelessly evil woman. So, even though the name is beautiful, if you say Jezebel, you immediately think of a horrible woman, and that's not a name you'd want to give your daughter. A name that is admirable, however, is Esther. Her Hebrew name was Hadassah, but when she was taken captive by the king with all of the other maidens of Persia, her uncle changed her name to Esther to protect her, and by her humility she became the queen, and through a series of events the Jewish people were close to being annihilated. Esther, putting her own life on the line, interceded and saved her people. I think that's very, very admirable. And the name Esther means star. So the first two women that I'm going to be talking about are Vashti and Ruth. And Vashti is sort of the bad girl in this uh, set. Vashti was a queen she was very disobedient. She cut herself off completely from her husband and so she was dethroned and replaced by Esther who was a very, very um, good woman. Um, and although Vashti wasn't as bad a character as someone like Jezebel or Delilah, um, I still wouldn't personally use her name. Um, and I don't particularly like the sound of her name either, so that's another reason why I wouldn't use it. Ruth, on the other hand, I think is such a beautiful, simple, classic name uh, with a very, very good biblical association. Um, in the Bible, Ruth um, was living away from her family. She was living with her husband's family. Um, and all of her husband's family, including her husband, died except for her mother-in-law, Naomi. Um, and instead of going back to her own family, she stayed with Naomi um, and took care of her. And I think that shows that she was very, very kind. And she ended up marrying one of Naomi's relatives, Boaz, and they became the great-grandparents of King David. Another unusable name is Athaliah, 
and Athaliah, it really is a pretty name. That's the sorry thing about these unusable names is some of them are actually quite pretty. But Athaliah was the daughter of King Ahab and Jezebel. She was as malicious and hot-headed as her mother was. Her husband took the throne and he died a year later. Then her son took the throne and then was killed. Athaliah saw her chance to become the queen, so she killed all of her grandchildren except one nurse who hid one of her grandsons and then claimed herself sovereign. And she reigned queen for six years until she herself was killed. She was blinded by selfishness and ascended the throne by killing all the heirs that stood in her way, which were her grandchildren. On the other hand, there were very two admirable women in the Bible, and they were Shifra and Pua, and these were two Hebrew women who were midwives while the Israelites were being oppressed in Egypt. When Pharaoh told the midwives that if the Hebrew women had sons to kill them, they were obviously troubled. They loved the Lord and wouldn't do it, and they told Pharaoh that the women birthed too quickly to do anything. That's when Pharaoh gave the decree to his men to kill the young boys, and that's where Moses began his history. But these women were honorable, and they truly tried to protect the children. Shifra means beautiful, which I think is just so cute, and Pua means splendid. The next two women that I'm going to talk about were very strong um, characters um, in their own ways. Um, one of them in not such a great way, and the other one in a more admirable way. Um, the first one is Delilah, and I get a lot of questions about why the name Delilah isn't usable. Well, in the Bible, Delilah was a very seductive woman, and she seduced the hero Samson to find out his weakness. Um, a group of men paid her to find out his weakness, and she turned him over to them, and they um, beat him and tortured him and killed him. So, unfortunately, although the name itself is very beautiful, the association isn't uh, that great at all. Um, on the other hand, we have Zipporah, and Zipporah might be a little strange sounding to um, English speakers, although I think it's a very pretty name. It means bird. Um, and Zipporah was the wife of Moses, and she was from a completely different background than him. He was from Egypt, um, and he was a Jew, and she was from the Midian people. And she followed him back through the desert to Egypt um, because God told him to go and save um, his people from Pharaoh. And she followed him and was there for him the entire way. And I think that that just so shows such a strength of character and such a love and commitment to her husband. So I think that she is a very, very admirable woman. Herodias, another unusable name, not just because it is probably a very unusable name anyway, it doesn't have a pretty sound, but she was the wife of King Herod, and she was cunning and mischievous. She married her uncle, then divorced him, and married her other uncle, and she raised her daughter to be a seductive dancer, and through her daughter she had John the Baptist killed because he had told her what she did was not right. And she not only killed him, but she had his head delivered to her on a platter. <laughs> but the contrasting admirable woman, Abigail, was married to a not-so-great guy. He was rich, but lazy and selfish. And when David, before he was king, was battling against the king who was trying to kill him, he asked for sustenance from Abigail's husband, but he refused. And David was on his way to kill him when Abigail ran out to meet David with sustenance, and she fell before him and begged David not to kill her husband. He was blessed by her, and when her husband died shortly after, David took Abigail as his wife. I think that's pretty admirable. And Abigail means joy of the father. The next two women that I'm going to talk about are Bathsheba and Elizabeth. And... Bathsheba, um, I don't think this name would be usable in North America or English-speaking countries anyways, just because um, 
it's not a name that you would hear, and I could see lots of teasing potential with this name. Um, but Bathsheba in the Bible was a very beautiful woman, and she seduced King David, but she was married when she seduced him, so she cheated on her husband. And her husband was a soldier, and King David actually killed him, and then married Bathsheba. So, not the greatest story to go along with the name. Um, on the other hand, Elizabeth was a very, very honorable woman. Um, she was the wife of a priest, and the Bible says that she and her husband walked blamelessly. Um, but unfortunately, she couldn't have children. But um, when she was older, the Lord told her that she would have a son. And at around the same time, her relative Mary got pregnant and came to visit her. And when Mary came to visit Elizabeth, the child that Elizabeth was carrying jumped for joy in her womb. And Elizabeth's son was John the Baptist, and Mary's son was Jesus Christ. Sapphira, Sapphira, an unusable name because she wasn't an honest person. She and her husband came to pay tithe and lied about it. They had sold a piece of land and lied about the price. It wasn't that the tithe amount they brought was incorrect, it was the fact that they unabashedly lied about it and didn't feel a bit of remorse. And, of course, she died pretty much on the spot, but Sapphira isn't the best of names for her dishonesty. And then you have Tabitha and Priscilla, admirable women. Uh, both of these women opened their homes to the Apostle Paul. It says that Tabitha abounded with deeds of kindness and charity also known as Dorcas, but I think Tabitha is a prettier name. And Priscilla and her husband Aquila were encouragers and seemed nurturing. Tabitha means a gazelle, and Priscilla means ancient. The last few women I'm going to talk about um, are Salome, Jael, and Jochebed. And um, we have two admirable women here just because there are so many admirable women from the Bible that we had to double up here but um, Salome is the bad girl in this set but there were two Salomes in the Bible and one of them was actually a very good person and she actually went with Mary and Mary Magdalene to the tomb of Jesus after he died to take care of the body but unfortunately, most people associate the name with the second Salome, who danced seductively for her stepfather and his friends to help her mother kill John the Baptist. So definitely not the greatest association to go along with the name, although I think Salome is a very, very pretty name, and if it weren't for that association, I would probably like this name quite a bit. Jael and Jochebed were two very, very strong women. Jael um, killed a famous general who was greatly oppressing her people and helped to set them free. And Jochebed also helped to set her people free um, through her son Moses. Um, and Moses was born at a time when Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, was ordering all the... Um, baby boys of the people of Israel to be killed because he was worried that they were going to become overpopulated and um, uprise against him. So she saved her son Moses, who in turn saved his people. Um, and Jael means wild mountain goat and can also be pronounced Yale. And Jacobed means God is glory and the Hebrew pronunciation is Yoheved. Michael, or you could also pronounce it Michal, but I think most people pronounce it as Michael, is an unusable name. She was not the best of people. She might have had some feelings for the ruddy and handsome David when she lied to her father to protect him, but when David was exiled, she married another man. When David came and took her back as his wife, her love for him had definitely cooled. A concordance says it best. The next scene in which she figures indicates that her love had cooled and had even turned to disdain, for after David's enthusiastic joy and ecstatic dancing before the newly restored Ark of the Covenant, she received him with bitter and scornful mockery, and the record closes with the fact that she remained all her life childless. Yes, definitely 
not what I want to name my daughter after. (laughs) And the last admirable woman, her name probably isn't that usable, but she's still worth mentioning, and that's Rahab. Now, Rahab was a harlot, and that can't be denied, but whatever decisions or life circumstances put her there, she did have a respect for the Lord. When two spies came into the walls of her city, she immediately recognized that they were of the Lord. She hid them, even conniving to protect them from the king. She also loved her family because when she helped save the spies, she made them promise that when they came to conquer that she and her family would be spared. And Rahab means spacious. And I just see her heart, and I think her heart was very admirable and honorable. So those are some of the names of interesting women from the Bible, some good, some not so good. Um, And I just want to thank Alexia for um, letting me be part of this video. I really, really appreciate it. So this is the video. I hope you guys liked it. We are both, Amelia and I, so anxious to hear your comments and your feedback. And... Just thank you so much, you guys. And and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. I will talk to you later. Bye. I'll talk to you later. Bye.